You can just cruise it and chill a bit. That guy actually stop buddy moving, you start buddy taking off. Where are you going? Oh. Where are you going, mate? Oh, Luggy, you're going in the cage, mate. I think we have a photo opportunity. Oh, God. Come on, you go in the cage. Uh, huh? You, Lily, you go in the cage? You go in the cage? No? Who wants to go in the cage? Jake? No, you go in the cage.
rested on the bed. Oh. Shame <laughs> on you, say them all. boy here for swearing at a police. <laughs> but then as to what gets you hang is kind of another story. Eight men executed here. It's only eight because after 1881, Victoria centralised execution to Melbourne. There'd been so many botched hangings in country jails. Slow, painful deaths in country jails. That's why it's only eight. Which for me is eight too many. So I try and think about it the way they did in the 19th century, when I wouldn't have questioned capital punishment. None of us would. It's official government business. It's a matter for the courts. Government knows what they're doing. Court's not going to make a mistake. We're all happy with that line of thinking, are we? <laughs> and hanging was scientific. They loved science in the 19th century. This is mathematically proven to be an instant painless death which if you know anything about hanging, you know is often not the case. But the general public, we didn't think it was cruel. So there are kindnesses. There's the final meal, he's visited by a priest. In most cases, the condemned man's family would be brought here to the jail the night before. They'd spend some time with their husband, father, son. On the day of the execution, the jail would be put into lockdown. All the prisoners kept in their cells for the whole day. So you wouldn't have seen the prisoners moving around. But that circle area, they would have held about 50 witnesses. The gentlemen of Beechworth, banker, postmaster, schoolmaster, absolutely no women, because of course it's no sight for a lady. These men are here as official government witnesses to make sure everything is done correctly in accordance with the law. Mm -hmm. They're here for a jolly good morning's entertainment. This was a social event. So they stand in that circle area, they look up, they'd see the condemned man, brought from his cell, he's made to stand on this trapdoor, and he's face to face with the hangman. They can look in each other's eyes. He's asked for his final words. Then the hood slipped over his head, noose tightened around his neck. The governor gives a signal, the hangman pulls a lever, and then this trapdoor falls open. The condemned man falls to the end of the rope, his neck broken at the bottom, hopefully. This all takes five, maybe 10 minutes, but the man is to hang for half an hour. So the gentlemen chat amongst themselves. Then the doctor comes over to check that he's dead. Mm. And after half an hour in Beechworth jail, he always was. So the body's cut down, put in a wheelbarrow, wheeled off, unceremoniously buried in unconsecrated land within the prison grounds. Part of your punishment is to never leave jail and to never find peace. So they're still here. And I'll show you where later. <laughs> Going, going, going. Housing the Ned before he was sent to Melbourne. We're going to own swimming pool. What? Look, we got a swimming pool. What? Don't go near it. Don't go near it. the Gerd's place. I always say to young people, go up and have a look and then take three steps back away from it again. That's it. Three steps well, back. Oh, look at that. That looks lovely. Yeah. Beautiful. It looks like Stop people the... pee. I think so, yeah. <laughs> the, the executions 
What were the crimes that they... Yeah, so that's a thing. I'll do that. That's yeah. a, a good five minute of talking. Okay. Um, so if there's no other serious questions, Ellen Kelly, were people interested in that? When yeah, I yeah. 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 Before? yeah, fascinating. Fascinating. And that's why I have to do this properly, because she's the most interesting Kelly in this place. Ellen was here, 1878, convicted of the attempted murder of a policeman. So this is when she hit Constable Fitzpatrick with a fire shovel. And it changed Victorian history forever. Because before the Fitzpatrick incident and his mother's arrest, Ned was a horse thief. You know, he was that normal troublemaker I was talking about. He was not a bush ranger. But Ned was so upset by his mother's arrest, the terrible way she was being treated in Beechworth Jail, it's when he called his mates together. Hey Dan, Joe, Steve, let's figure out a way to bust mum from jail. So the Kelly gang, and all that we think of, the bank robberies, the police shootings, really it all stems from Ellen Kelly being locked in Beechworth Jail. Seems like a bit of an overreaction, doesn't it? But then you understand, Ellen was locked here with her four day old baby. Oh, maybe else, right? You start to see why Ned's throwing I also start to see why Ellen was a bit snaky. <laughs> so baby Alice only stayed with Ellen in Beechworth Jail for a couple of weeks. Then she was taken by the family. She was really well looked after. But baby's the only happy story in this whole thing. Ellen did another month here in Beechworth Jail. She was transferred to Melbourne Jail. She did three years hard labour. Just to give you a sense of the time frame, because don't we think about Ned Kelly rampaging Victoria for decades? Not at all. 1878, Ned is just a horse thief. Ellen gets arrested and sentenced to three years. By 1880, her son Dan had been killed at the siege of Glenrowan. Her son Ned was brought to Melbourne Jail, where Ellen was still serving her sentence to be hanged. She was allowed to visit him the evening before, told him, just mind you die like a Kelly son. And then Ellen had four months left on her sentence. She served them out, came home to greet her, settled down, lived until 1923. She's 91 years old. There are photographs of Ellen Kelly sitting in a motor car. I find that amazing God. to think that Ned Kelly's mother rode in a car. But when she was here, she was poor old Mrs. Kelly. Isn't it terrible the way they treat that poor old woman? She was 41. <laughs> I think 11 children by three husbands, maybe takes a toll on a lady's looks. <laughs> wow. So that's Ellen. <laughs> Fascinating, right? And then, before I run out of time, who wants to hear about the eight executed men? Yep. That one yes. Yep. Yep. Let me remind you again. This is really unpleasant stuff. This is quite awful. If anything, I've talked about a bit much. No? Great. I've got six murderers, a child molester, and an innocent man. Patrick Sheehan. First man hanged at Beechworth Jail. In a drunken fury, he stabbed the barman who told him it was closing time. Oh. He sobered up in his cell the next day. He had no memory of doing it. Couldn't work out why he stabbed his mate, but he hanged a, he, um, killed a man, so he was going to hang for it. There was lots of sympathy in the community for Patrick Sheehan. He was a hopeless alcoholic. So was everybody else on the goldfields. He was a nice guy, hard worker, loving family man with a wife and four children. Everyone agreed it was the drink. He wouldn't have done it sober. So they took up a collection in the community to support his widow and children. The good that it did them. Less than a year after Patrick Sheehan's execution, his children were taken to court, convicted of being neglected children. It's a crime. It's called the Criminal Neglected Children's Act. It's the closest thing they had to child protection. So these kids were shipped off to a government reform school, never heard from again. Kids were put in jail for not having a father. And if you're wondering about the mother, I would suggest you didn't pay attention when I was talking about life for single women on the goldfields. James Quinn, not related to the Kelly Quins, he killed a Chinaman. So James Quinn killed a Chinaman. And the interesting thing about it is that's what it says in all the official documentation, all the court records talk about the killing of the Chinaman. Like it's talked about differently to murdering a person in the 19th century. It was a different crime. Surprisingly, it's still gotten the death penalty but the local community were outraged, horrified, and there were angry letters to the newspaper that they were hanging a white man for this. Thomas Hogan has two stories. There's the official story, which is DT, delirium tremens. I think today it's called an alcohol-induced psychosis. He beat, then shot, then burned his own brother to death. There's a family story that's passed down through the years that the brother had an intellectual disability. 
The parents had been his carers, and we know the parents had recently died. It's clear from all the court and prison records Hogan had some serious mental issues aside from the alcohol. The family suggests in his mental illness and confusion, he was just trying to solve the problem, a mercy killing of sorts. Robert Rowan shot a fellow miner for seven pounds, probably a cold-blooded murder for a couple months wages. One of two James Smiths, he was a bigamist, married his second wife. While he was still married to his first wife, he was very violent towards her. She threatened to go to the police, so he beat her to death. His first wife gave damning evidence at his trial. And that's the only thing that got him hanged, because of course, if no one witnessed domestic violence, it hadn't happened. Child molester, really awful crime. You get no sympathy for it today, you got no sympathy then. None in the community, no sympathy in the judiciary either. They didn't bother to send to Melbourne to fetch a hangman. They just let one of the other prisoners have a go at it. Oh, oh. You've got a murderer and an innocent man. It's kind of a stretch. It's like to stir up some feelings. <laughs> I think today it's called Manslaughter and Company. Thomas Brady and James Smith went into a shop to rob the shopkeeper. They had no plans to kill him, but something went wrong. And a single shot was fired from the single gun that one of the men was carrying. Shopkeeper was killed. Smith and Brady ran, caught, dragged into questioning. Pretty logical question, which of you two man, men fired the one shot before the shot killer? He did it. <laughs> I mean, today the police would have to continue investigating, but in the 19th century, they could just arrest both of them and then they'll put on trial as if they were one man. Convicted as one, sentenced to death as a single legal entity. Asked, lots of times. Who did it? We only need to hang one man but they both continued to maintain their innocence until they were standing side by side on the trapdoor under two identical nooses, asked for their final words and there was an offer. Who pulled the trigger? Own up right now, we'll let your friend walk. Wow. And they both stayed silent, they both dropped. Thomas Brady died instantly. James Smith cut, kicked and struggled at the end of the rope for several minutes. Then they were both cut down, put in the same coffin, buried in a single grave. So they were friends to the end eternity with the man who betrayed you. Ooh. But they've taken their secret with them, so we'll never know. But Out exploring around Beechworth. Now we're heading... Let me look at the map here. So we're going to go drive through the Nine Mile Creek Historic Area. Trying to look for a hut. Underground hut. There we go. Just come up Jenkins there. Nice little hill climb. Hit me heel, I'm in pain. Nice little creek. This dog's gonna spray me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. I was on to him. So, I think we're here. I think we found this underground hut. So we only found out about it because James, who's at the caravan park at Lake Sambal where we're staying, he told us about it. So we'll see how, how it is. Just waiting for the full drives to come back across the river. We went a bit too far. But uh, Google Maps, hopefully spot on. And we're on the spot here. But yeah, it should be good. We'll see how it looks. Here comes the creeper. Dusty. Filthy. Get a bit closer. I'm parking my toes. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's a good way to cross the river there. Little creek. Yeah. 
Oh, what was that? <laughs> rough! That was rough. Let's see. Ah, got me. Where's his hut? Oh, here it is. Google Maps. Yeah, cool. Don't know. Have to go in there. Put the light on. The creatures are in here. The light really does nothing in here though. No. Just looking at... Oh, it's nice and bloody cool. Oh, good. Isn't it? Oh, shit. It's an uncle gun. I don't know how much. Oh, yeah? It's like a little pizza oven. Oh, yeah. Don't know how much the GoPro is going to pick up. Oh, yeah. Oh, there it is. That's better. It's a bit risky having yeah, a fire like... in here, isn't it? <sighs> they've got the... No, they've got the thing there. The... Oh, the chimney. Chimney, yeah. How cool is this? It's got a sink and everything. I'm about to look, look up the history. I think it's on the on the Vic High Country oh, hut. It's really cool in there. Oh, look at this. Oh, God. Hello down there. This is the roof. Yeah, sure. Lucky you got me hiking shoes on. Oh, it's oh, it's like a channel through the rocks. Looks cool. Can't. Oh, yeah, there's a bridge in that there. Oh, cool. Can't quite. See the angle. Imagine getting on a raft and going down there. You can get down there, but it's a drone peak to the rocks. Oh, hello. The old bridge. Looks cool, does it? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Good girl. So what was a two to four minute walk? We've ended up somehow doing a loop the other side. Oh. Yeah, we've gone like full off-road bush more hike. Steps. How long do you reckon we've been? Half an hour? More? Get back to Mel. Just gonna wonder where we've been. Oh, to be honest, I reckon down here is probably better. Like, it's got a little shade. <laughs> as long as you can cover your body a little bit. Just watch those rocks. They're Anything near the water is putrid. Yeah, it just drops down. This might be a nice pool down here. That's awesome. A bit deep over there, right? Still look really stagnant though, that one. Yeah, that one's, yeah, not moving much, but then it flows. Oh, this looks cool down here. Oh, yeah. This is the spot. <laughs> Yeah, that one. Oh, this one, yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's like ice. Oh, watch it. That's bad. It's bad. Oh, no. And that green tinge to it, it's danger. How did you get across? It's around the top. Yeah, maybe back. I want to see what's over the edge. That's awesome. That's nice, that. Right, that down. looks deep too, like the other one. Yeah. That's it's, cool. Yeah, this is the way to go, I reckon.
just on Wallaby Mine Track. Trying to look for the mine. Oh, it's gonna be fun walking up. I reckon. This is the one. Oh, it's like a sunshine through it. Here we go. It's so cool in here. Oh, and this. Oh. oh, this is cool. How awesome. Oh, how that. This is so cool. Oh, you right? Yep. How, cool. <laughs> How cool is this? This is unbelievable. It's in. It's in, it's in like good nick, like they haven't been idiots spraying Spraying the walls or anything like that too. I don't know if you'd be able to see that on the GoPro, but it kind of continues down there, but it's very dark. And there's another one down there. That's, this is this is really cool. Some big hole up there, you wouldn't want to be walking through the bush there and bye bye. Climb up a goat track. Oh, I think we took the hard way too. There's a better way there. Oh, for fuck's sake. So, I think we've taken the we've taken the hard way, and I think we're still taking the hard way because we're on this brick wall here. Get down. The main walk to the mine shaft is easy, but and we've gone the hard way here. So, something, I think they crushed the rock up with it or something. Battery, battery ram or something they call it. Just trying to look for a tunnel. Apparently it goes under Beechworth. Just up here somewhere. Yeah, they've blocked it off. Can't fit in there. Yeah, as you can see, it's quite small. Oh, bummer. Just relaxing. Probably. Not bad, there's a the viewpoint for the waterfall over there. Beachworth Part 2.
We head home, drop off the trailer and head towards the Otways National Park. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching guys.